Welcome to the Software Carpentry screencast on databases. This screencast is on retrieving data from tables in a database. Databases come in many flavors. In these screencasts, we will be using the SQLite Manager plugin for Firefox. As you've seen, a database is a way to store information that is arranged as tables. We will be using a database that has a single table named Experiment. This table is a log of all of the work done on experiments in a research lab, broken down by project and scientist. The table has a column for the login ID of the scientist, the name of their project, a numeric ID for their experiment, how many hours they spent on it, and when the experiment took place. Each row or record in this table describes one scientist's work on a certain experiment on a given date. To start, let's write an SQL query that retrieves the login ID and the project name from the experiment table. We do that by using the SQL command select. We then list the columns we want to read from the database table. We want the login ID and the project name. So we write those column names and then we write from and the name of the table we want the data from, experiment. We put a semicolon at the end to tell the database that this is the end of the command. I've capitalized the words select and from because they are SQL keywords. Capitalization isn't necessary, but we'll continue this throughout the screencast so that it's clear what is a keyword and what is a table name or field name. When we run the command, it shows us all of the data from the experiment table for the two columns we asked for, the login ID and the project name. If we wanted the hours column, we'd just add that to the list of columns in the select clause. So after the select command, we listed all of the fields we wanted returned. And you can place them in any order. We could have written project, then login ID, and even repeated some. If you want to pull up all of the columns in a table, you can use the asterisk or star after select. The asterisk means all of the column names. It's just a shortcut. So if we run this query, we see all of the column names from the table. If there are duplicate rows returned by your query, it is possible to remove those duplicates. For example, let's say we fetched the project column from the experiment table. And if we just wanted to know which different projects the scientists were working on, we use the distinct keyword. We put that right after the select keyword. This lists all of the projects, but only once. If you select more than one column name, say project and login ID, then only the distinct pairs of projects and login IDs are returned. So suppose that 10% of the time spent on each experiment was prep work, which needs to be accounted for separately. In our select statement, we can add expressions that do computations on each row. So to calculate 10% of the time spent on each experiment, we can add an expression to the list of columns in the select field. In this case, we'll put a star there to select all of the columns, and we'll add the expression hours multiplied by 0.1. When we run the query, the expression hours times 0.1 is evaluated for each row and appended to the output. Expressions in the select clause can use any of the fields, all of the arithmetic operators, as well as certain built-in functions. For instance, we could round these values to the first decimal place by using the round function. In this screencast, we've introduced the very basics of interacting and retrieving data from a database. We've seen that you can select columns from a table to retrieve them, use the distinct keyword to only return unique rows, as well as append calculated columns to the output. 